Thank you for joining us for Cape Chronicle. I'm Audra Kane. Today on our show, we are joined by a mayor, a coach, and a proponent of the arts. The mayor of Cape Girardeau, Bob Fox, is here to share his focus for 2018 and a little about himself. The general manager of the newly formed Cape Catfish, our baseball team, Mark Hogan, is here to share his details of the league and our future team, and the assistant director of the Southeast Holland School of Visual and Performing Arts, Bob Churchio, will detail the 12th performing arts season at the River Campus. That's all ahead on Cape Chronicle. You can sing in the shower and doodle in the margins of a notebook for the rest of your life, or you can push your creativity to center stage and develop the skills to back it up. At Southeast Missouri State University, you can surround yourself with minds that are as creative and weird and beautiful as yours at a campus dedicated exclusively to the arts, with classmates who share your passion and faculty who know the industry. You've got talent. Let's see what you got. Dr. Kane. Mayor Bob Fox joins us, and we are glad to have you. Glad to be here. Welcome to the show. And you are newly elected in April. Yes. So how have the first few months gone? It's been very good. Uh, it's been an easy transition. I met with uh, the former mayor and city manager for a few months beforehand, so it made it easier. Um, uh, there are, of course, a lot of things that have been going on for the past decade here in Cape Girardeau. What are some of the things that are on your plate for the next year? The next year? Well, first of all, uh, my goal was to get more citizen involvement and more citizen engagement. Uh, I began that by changing the format of our meetings. Uh, so we, instead of meeting at five and seven, we meet at five and then it goes straight to the meeting and we don't have an hour break in between. Uh, it encourages more people to stay and uh, hopefully we'll have more people attending our council meetings and getting involved. So over the past few months, have more people been staying? Yeah, it has been a, it's been a pleasant surprise. Okay, good. Well, um, are there any city projects that you find uh, particularly exciting that are on the way? You know, our biggest, the, th the exciting thing was that when I was elected, it, uh, at the same time we passed our PRS2, to PRS2 stormwater tax, mm -hmm. uh, that really won't uh, begin until 2019, but it, there are n numerous projects in the parks around the city and in with stormwater that will be done the next 10 to 15 years that are exciting. Um, are there any ideas that you have had that you would like to see brought to the table and, uh, and enacted? Ideas, that, even when you were serving on the council that you thought you would know, be a good idea? My biggest thing is to make our meetings meaningful Mm. and have our study, section, study sessions mean something and encourage people to watch it on the Access Channel or to be there. Uh, we've had a session on the airport. Or we started off with the budget and finance. Mm. Uh, I want to have a session on streets uh, so people can see how the city prioritizes uh, repairs or replacements, uh, how they do the whole process and people will understand more why all the potholes are not fixed all at once and why some are fixed and some are not and so forth. So you mentioned that you want to see more citizen involvement. A little bird told me about a citizen academy that's coming up toward the, that'll begin toward the end of August. Right. And what is the purpose of that citizen academy? We've always had a police academy and a fire academy and, and we've never had just a citizen academy to to let people know about what goes on in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 a, it's like a big business. And uh, the f the we're having this uh, Citizens Academy in eight sessions uh, to let the people just see what the city does and what services we provide and how we provide them and what that means for the citizens. So those Citizen Academy sessions, I believe they're two hours? They're two week? hours. Uh, the first one will be uh, on the administrative side, City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, they will see everything that goes on in City Hall and meet some of the people that do those jobs. Uh, the second will be on budget and finance. 
Uh, we have a new assistant finance director uh, who is in line to take John's job when he retires. And uh, uh, they'll see that part of it, mm -hmm. uh, how the money is, is collected, how it's spent, uh, and how we have a balanced budget. Uh, there'll be other areas in public works, which, which encompass uh, waste management, trash, recycling, uh, streets, the whole works. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. What was it that motivated you to actually get this whole citizen involvement initiative going? There just seems to be less people wanting to get involved with city government. Not just city government, it's with school boards too. Mm -hmm. In the last election, there were many, many candidates unopposed. I was unopposed. We had two council persons unopposed. Uh, there were school board members unopposed, and the same in Jackson. So it's it's not just a Cape Girardeau problem. It's it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and you see it from all the way down at the very lowest local level all the way up to national offices where people Sometimes. Are, are almost afraid to run. So what motivated you to run besides that wanting to be involved? Well, that's a long story. I, I, uh, I was first asked to run for council, and uh, they caught me in a in a moment when I had, you know, I was on the school board for t for nine years, and then I really got involved with my profession and and uh, did that for 15 years, and culminated in being president of the Missouri Dental Association, and and I did that, and I was I felt kind of like kind of a has been and. It was kind of nice just to do nothing, fish and goof off and <laughs> read for a while. But uh, I was asked to run for council, and uh, I said, oh, my. I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, we're traveling a lot more. I'm not working as much. And my wife would never go for that. And first thing they did was ask her. She said, yeah, get him out of the house. <laughs> so I ran for council. And once I was on the council, uh, Mary Redeker had two terms left, and it just kind of intrigued me that, uh, you know, we had to have somebody take his place and somebody mm -hmm. be that person, and I just thought it would be the right time. Timing was right. Somebody that was as passionate about the city as Mary Redeker was. Uh, tell you what, Mary Redeker's passion is unsurpassed, and his dedication He's a rough act to follow. Right. Harry he was is. everywhere all the time. He was. Uh, Sometimes we thought there was more than one of him. I know. <laughs> I know. I still work a little bit at the office, not much. Uh, but I, I still try to, to be places when, I'm, when I wanted. So you probably get support from your patients, your dental patients. Yeah. What about from Mrs. Fox? Mrs. Fox is a supporter. He, uh, like I said, I would jokingly, she wants me out of the house. She just says, I don't want you here all the time. You'd drive me nuts if you were home all the time. I, I love to play golf. I love to fish. And when I fish, I usually go to Bull Shoals, which is four hours away, and I'm there for a few days. Uh, but I I got her golfing a few years ago, and we've been heavily involved in couples golf and traveling with other couples, and that takes time. And But it's she's behind me. So, she won't always be there, but... Well. She's not a people person she's, sometimes. Fortunately for her, she's not elected to the office. That's right. So <laughs> um, let me ask you a question. What are you most passionate about in the city of Cape Girardeau? Of course, you're passionate about the city in general. Otherwise, you wouldn't have wanted to run for mayor. You know, I'm just passionate that, that we, ha we are such a regional hub, and we've got to, to maintain uh, everything we've started to keep that going. Uh, and part of that, you know, part of our big problem right now is our sales tax revenue is kind of flat. And uh, we've looked at what options we have, you know, to do that. One of, the, one of those being a use tax. And the recent su Supreme Court decision may have changed that for us. It may, it may make it easier. That we've, that's all got to pan out and just see how it goes. Um, we mentioned the Citizen Academy. If people want to find out more information about how they can participate, I'm assuming that they'll just contact City Hall. Contact City Hall. It begins toward and the end it of It begins the uh, end of August. We'll run eight weeks, and I would imagine we may do it uh, again in about six months okay. and, and try to you know, keep it ongoing if we have people interested. Will they get an opportunity to meet the mayor? Sure they will. <laughs> Good. Good, and they can do that at a city hall, at a at a city they can council, do that meeting, at a council as well. meeting. Oh, they're 
a number of other places. Well, good. Well, it has been so great to talk to you. We've great never had the to opportunity you. to meet. No, we haven't. Thank well, you. Well, we'll have you back on the show, I we'll guarantee. We'll do it again, I'm sure. Great. Well, so Jim Dufek will make sure. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Professor Dufek loves to have the mayor on board, and we're glad to have you. Thank, Thank you Thank you. I appreciate it. We've been chatting with our mayor, Bob Fox. So much going on in this great city, and it will continue with him. Next, general manager of the newly formed Cape Catfish baseball team, Mark Hogan, to talk baseball. Stay with us for more of Cape Chronicle. No, don't go, don't go running off just yet. <laughs>
it's it's a pretty good travel league, but it's not unlike the OVC, which I know most of our fans are familiar with. And currently there's 11 teams in the league, but they're expanding that, right? Our aim in the league, the uh, the profile is to continue to expand. And there are uh, there's some considerations right now where the communities are trying to see the viability of it, like we did several mm-hmm. months ago. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we could, you know, possibly have some announcements uh, with within the near future, hopefully. And sponsorship was important, right? Well, I mean, this is a this is you know for us, we're starting from ground zero. I mean, at this point, we don't have bats, balls, uniforms. We know, we have an idea what our uniform is going to look like, and we have our our name, of course. Mm-hmm. We uh, we had a, a wonderful spirited uh, uh, time at this spring with the community and. We really very thankful for for their uh, responses and uh, the catfish won out. So uh, we're working on that. And um, you know we've had a lot of questions about that that end of the development and more of that stuff will be coming out this fall. And you mentioned the community and support and excitement. What's something that they can do to continue to support the team through the next year? Well, I mean, it's it's going to be hard because we won't play a game until June 1st right. or thereabouts in 2019. Um, we are going to open the team store in September. Okay. We've had many requests about where's the, where are the hats, where's apparel. So we're doing that right now, and and we think that's very unique. I mean, it says something to the interest level. We've had we've had a lot of requests. Uh, and for those folks, I'm sorry that we don't we don't have that here at this moment. But developing this, it's important to try to get it right the first time. Mm-hmm. So we've been we haven't been slow, but I would say we've been methodical. Methodical, yeah. That's <clears throat> and that's an important thing to do when you're when you're actually forming a club from the ground up because this is from scratch. What do you feel like your background with Southeast Missouri State kind of lends to that? Well, I mean, I feel my baseball operational expertise will be my forte within the organization. However, when you start the organization with uh, with, uh, our principal owner, Andy Patel, and Jim Limbaugh, um, my great friend from here in town, um, we're we're sharing all the responsibilities. So I kind of envision my role down down the way here, maybe a couple of years when things settle down, will be more the baseball operation guy, uh, hiring coaches, uh, helping find and develop players, everyday operational stuff at the ballpark. Um, but right now we're 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 working on hiring people for front office positions. We are dealing with the city on several issues at the at the park itself for enhancements for our fans. And uh, you know, there's just a lot of things going on. Ordering uniforms. The bats, the balls, the helmets. Yeah, and you mentioned bats. This is a an all wooden bat league. Right? That's right. We won't we won't be metal bats. It'll be wood. So, um, and that is a pretty popular theme across the country with the upper level uh, collegiate summer baseball league. So. I would expect that we'll see some high-level play, not at the pros level, but certainly a high level of collegiate athletes that are coming into play for yeah, us. Yeah, the, the student athletes that come in here are going to be uh, going back to their university, so they, they won't be draftable at, uh, for the year that they're with us, but they're going to be honing their skills. They're serious ball players. They're on the radar with professional uh, scouts and organizations and what we're going to be able to offer is a 60 game schedule in two months so it's pretty much every night that's a lot so you got to really love baseball and and you also (laughs) have to have achieved a certain level to to be able to uh to come in and and perform at this level so it's exciting i mean and again we get to hand pick or recruit and you know those are all uh they're, they're going to be uh, uh, very interesting things as we go forward. Well, I look forward to the season in 2019, and maybe we'll even have you back and, and talk a little bit more about the developments of the team and what people can expect as fans. I'd look forward to that. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, it was Audra. great to have Thank you, you here. Thank you so much. Thanks again to Cape Catfish General Manager Mark Hogan. We look forward to that opening season. After the next break, we will hear from Assistant Director of the Southeast Holland School of Visual and Performing Arts, Bob Churchio, on the 12th upcoming Performing Arts season and more.
This is Candace Davis. This is Shad Burner. Hello, this is Tom Hardy. I'm Stacy Dohan Lane. This is Frank Nicole. I'm Brooke Hildebrand Clubs. This is Nate Savarino. You're listening to KRCU. At KRCU, we don't just say anything. Tune in weekdays to hear local voices delivering trusted information on nature, food, history, health, sports, and more during NPR's Morning Edition. This is Cape Chronicle and I'm Audra Kane. We're back and Assistant Director of the Southeast Holland School of Visual and Performing Arts, Bob Churchio, joins us. Bob, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for asking. So I get excited whenever you all announce what the coming show schedule will be for the fall and the spring because who doesn't love that Broadway comes right here to Cape Girardeau? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I know that you get excited because it takes time to develop the schedule, yes? Oh, I'm, we, we work at two years in advance. Oh, on, wow, on shows. okay. And, and there are some big shows this year. We are very happy with, with there's big shows across the board. We not, not only have some big touring shows, but the Conservatory of Theater and Dance is doing a wonderful season as well this year. So it's, it's, it's going, and we're offering, we're offering a Broadway package. So if you just want to see Broadway shows, you can buy a Broadway package and get a, a discounted ticket. It's like a mini season ticket. Stop, you're making all the hair on my <laughs> arm stand up. <laughs> I didn't know it was that easy, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Broadway shows that are coming this year, let's, let's just go ahead and throw those out there. Okay. The first one that's coming is? Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar Conservatory of Theater and Dance is producing that for for five or six six performances. They've added a Saturday matinee this year because their matinees have been so very very popular. So, uh, and I'm pretty sure they're having a Saturday matinee for that one. There's six different ty sixteen different types of schedules, so I sometimes get them get get them mixed up. That's okay. They can always go to the River Campus website to that, check out what the schedule that, is. That is correct. I would think that with this year's live performance on a network of Jesus Christ Superstar with John Legend, it probably upped the excitement about the performances coming to the River Campus. Well, the well, first of all, the excitement comes from the students that do these performances. They 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 <laughs> they have more enthusiasm than I think you and I combined. Uh, with, although we love the shows, but they are they are so interested and so intrigued and and so excited to do these performances. And I don't know that anyone. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that everyone realizes the level of talent that we have at the River Campus. Well, The American Hero, this, this was the, the musical that was done this past year, is going to New York. Uh, I'm not sure of our air date. They may have already have been in New York by, by the time this airs, but uh, so, and they're the only university that's ever been invited to attend this, fe this theater festival in New York. So uh, the, the only college uh, group. So it's really, it's they're, really amazing. They're amazingly talented. And uh, there's a couple other just hit the highlights on the Broadway touring shows that are coming in. Oh, the the touring shows that are coming in are Evita, mm -hmm. the the longstanding Eva Perone story of Eva Perone, Absolutely. and Rent, which is oh, I've been trying to get Rent for for many 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 <laughs> years. And so we're really excited about those. Those are our two Broadway musicals, uh, touring Broadway musicals. This and year. are there long dates or are they single dates? They for are those? single dates. <gasps> For the, for the touring shows, we, we, we bring them in for one show. You, got, you get one chance to see them. So they'll, they'll, and and they, they will be excellent shows. The, the production companies, their values are, re their performance values are really Amazing. High. You guys have some fun stuff coming in. Did I see something about Chinese? The Chinese Warriors of Peking. And what is that? Well, it's martial arts, okay. but it is also 
uh, uh, bits of Chinese culture there. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the picture of the, the one person on a bicycle with like six, eight people on oh, top. Oh, sure. And it's, it's, it's amazingly intricate, amazing, di amazingly difficult to do. But these are uh, men and women who have studied this art form for many, many, many years. And uh, every now and then they tour the United States and we're very happy to be able to snag them this time around. A lot of fun to get to see something like that. And there are people who don't normally travel that might enjoy bringing their family to a show like that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, again, it, it, it's martial arts and uh, they do, uh, th there's a, 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 a picture of a man suspending himself on upturned spears. Which okay. okay, you know, you know he's, you know he knows how to do it. I hope so. You know you don't ever want to do it, no. but it, it, it's it's very not. exciting and, and and riveting to watch these. That people. should be a lot of fun. Now I will say I got the most excited when I saw that our town would be in the Wendy Kirker Rust yes. Flexible Theater because well, that's one of your favorites. It is it? one yes. of my favorites, but that sh that theater is also one of my favorites because it lends itself to the imagination of the audience. Yes. Well, our, our town is one of those plays where it's not a lot of uh, realistic scenery, and, and it, it's mm -mm. It, it exists in the mind. Right. And so the characters come out, and they tell you what's going on, and and they introduce uh, the the other characters, and and build build something in your mind as opposed to having to have a a, a, a prop sitting there, something right. that you would use. So it's 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 a, it's a beautiful and it's a beautiful beautiful play, and it's been around for. Forever and with that being a smaller theater, there are a few more shows. Yes, for that. Yes, so that that definitely they will have the the Saturday matinee for that show. They go okay. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday matinee, Saturday evening, Sunday, and then the dancer, uh, the the actors just collapse after. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's one. What would you say is the one besides Rent that you're the most looking forward to? Um, well, actually. I have never seen the uh, the uh, conservatory theater dances doing uh, Sister Act. Oh, and okay. I have never seen the Broadway musical version. I've seen the movie, but I've not seen the Broadway musical version of it. So I'm, I'm, I was very excited when I heard that. So were doing anyone Act. who loves pop culture style nuns singing, yes, that's the show for them. Yes, and and as I remember the movie, it was it was beautifully beautifully done and very very respectful. Not you know, not not negative no, in any I, way. I think it'll be great fun. But it'll, yeah, absolutely. We could talk no about this show. forever, but I think just sending them to the the River Campus website to check out the shows. Thank you so much for coming, oh, Bob Turkio. It's always a pleasure to have you here. We've been speaking with Assistant Director of the Southeast Holland School of Visual and Performing Arts, Bob Turkio. We thank all of our guests for taking time to share with us, and thank you for joining us today on Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration between the. Department Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University and the City of Cape Girardeau. Our producer is Nicolette Brennan. Our executive producer is Dr. Jim Dufek. I'm Audra Kane. Thanks for watching.